Now, first of all, I've been podcasting for many a year now, all right? And never, never in all my years of podcasting have I experienced such a disrespect, disregard for my craft and my talent and my efforts, all right? Dave Chappelle. D. Ray Davis. They... They got into a cat fight. They got into a cat fight on stage in regards to the Cat Williams interview on Club Shay Shay podcast. You know? Yo, Joe Rogan don't want me on his podcast. He don't want me on there. He be putting on the same six niggas that ain't ever been funny. You know? I've been reading books since I was three years old. Reading 3,000 books a year. I've been pimping since pimping been pimping. <laughs> Good old cat, you know. Um, Dave Chappelle and D. Ray Davis, you know, they got into a bit of a kerfuffle in regards to the Club Shay Shay viral podcast with um, Cat Williams. <laughs> oh my God. I, I love everybody, but I love Cat Williams more than I love a lot of people. And that thing is, is wild. And wreck TV. All right, all right. I'm at war with the Illuminati too. But what part of the war is ethering Cedric the Entertainer? I mean, this man is the Illuminati. But I'm going to stop with Cedric the Entertainer. And wreck TV. Shut up, nigga, because you know why you know why I disagree? Because I put a special out the same day and it was fine. And this nigga had to come out. I read 3,000 books by the time I was seven years old. What the fuck are you talking about? We tell you the money. Where is the money in that? Where is the money in that? And wreck TV. Nigga, that sounds ridiculous. No, I'm it. You have to pause about it so I know I'm smart. No, 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 say it again. All right. He said, D Ray, I will check. Yes. I put out an album and he put out a mixtape. Yeah, your shit popped. You put out a mixtape. I didn't know the costume. It's fun being drunk, isn't it, Dion? Dion's got the right idea. I covered it. I made a video. And, um, yo, got a little bit of flack. You know? Got a little bit of, you know, haters hating on me online. Trashing my video. Not everybody, but, you know, significant amount. You know what I mean? Now, first of all, I've been podcasting for many a year now, all right? And never, never in all my years of podcasting have I experienced such a disrespect, disregard for my craft and my talent and my efforts, all right? I bust my ass. I put my ass on the line every fucking couple of days or whatever, weeks or months or whenever I remember to, you know? So I be putting my ass on the line 
semi-regularly and regularly enough, put my ass on the line to entertain motherfuckers like you. Now, not the good eggs. Not the good eggs I'm yelling at here. I'm talking about these play-hating freaks who wanted to comment and trash my fucking video. Club Shay Shay, uh, what was it? D-Ray, Dave and D-Ray on stage cat fight, trash in my videos. Never in my podcasting history have I experienced such disrespect and disregard for my efforts and craft at the podcasting game. Now, I don't want to sit here and bore you to dog dick death with complaints and grievances. I don't want to complain. I don't want to squawk about it. You know what I mean? I don't want to throw you no guilt trip. You know, if you had a shred of decency, you would be bigging me up saying, you know, hey, here's a guy who's pretty funny and, you know, his impersonations are pretty funny. First of all, I don't practice these fucking things. I just spit them. If I went and sat down and practiced the, guess what? My name is Cat Williams, you know. Hey, what's going on, Atlanta? It's raining, it's snowing, it's foggy. A pimp don't know what to wear. You gotta love your life, motherfucker. You gotta love your life. It's a consortium. You know, these niggas be acting out in groups and cliques. It ain't no coincidence. It's a consortium. You know, if I was sitting around all dog dick day going over Cat Williams impersonations, then maybe I would be the best Cat Williams impersonator that ever lived. But that's not what I do, buddy. All right? For all you fucking play hating freaks out there who want to trash and talk shit about my videos. All right? Whatever. It's an all right Cat Williams impersonation. Eat it, pal. All right? First of all, and if you had any decency, a shred of decency in you, you know, you'd be bigging me up and, you know, hey, hey there, king. What's up, king? Go do your thing. Keep grinding, player. No, they want to trash my stuff, right? And, you know, I don't want to lay no guilt trip. I don't want to whine, complain, guilt trip anyone. You know, that's not my style. And that's between you and God. It's between you and God. If you want to trash my shit... I don't want to give you no guilt trip. It's between you and God. All right? Now, first off, 99% of people watched the video, Dave Chappelle, D. Ray Davis, hashing it out on stage about the Cat Williams interview. I watched the video through the same lens as 99.9% .9 of people. You know? I don't know them niggas. You know, I don't fucking know them niggas. You, you people don't know them. I don't know them. I don't know these niggas. I don't know these motherfuckers. You know, I don't know them. I don't know them. You know, Dave, a goat, a legend, probably my favorite comedian. I put him right up there with... Rodney Dangerfield, hey, you know, hey, you know, my wife, that's another one, you know, uh, you know, we pray after we eat, you know, my wife told me, come home, she's naked, I went home, there was nobody there, meh, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, um, my mother, she never loved me, she never breastfed me, she said she liked me as a friend, meh, you know, Rodney Dangerfield, one of my favorites. I, I put him and Dave Chappelle right up there, you know, top of my list. And, um, you know, so Dave's like one of my favorite comics, if not my favorite comic. He's a goat. Then D. Ray Davis, very successful comedian. A lot of people have heard of him. I've heard of him. It would be like such a, like a win or an opportunity or just a good lesson for me to like, you know, pick his brain, hear about his career. You know what I mean? He's somebody worthwhile in comedy, you know? But I don't know these niggas. I don't know them as much as any of you motherfuckers, you know? And people be talking like they know him. Oh, stick to the story. Talk about this. Talk. You don't know them. I don't know them, all right? And Dave, 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 D-Ray, if you guys are listening, I would love to go on tour with you guys. I would love to open for you. I'd, you know, I'll go and run and get your KFC or whatever the hell you want to do, you know? I mean... You know, I'll be the, I'll be the bat boy. You know what I mean? I'll be the water boy. I'll, you know, if, 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 hey, 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 we're talking goat, you know, Dave Chappelle. I mean, I would love to be in that orbit, but facts are facts, man. I don't know that nigga, you know, and I ain't no clout chasing punk bitch anyways. You know what I mean? Like all you 
player hating freaks commented on my video. I ain't no clout chaser. There ain't no hand me outs. There ain't no hand me downs in my world. I'll bust my ass day and night. You know, I'll make it on my own. I don't need no motherfucker to fucking do something for me. I'll do it myself. But Dave, if you are listening, I, I would love to, or D-Ray, you know, if, if you guys are listening, I mean, love to, you know, you know, I'll, I don't know, whatever you want me to do, hold your joke book, run and get your KFC, you know, um, you know, weed out the groupies, uh, that groupie, you can come into the club, that groupie, fucking beat it, you know, like I'll organize groupies, I'll carry your fucking joke book, whatever, whatever you guys need, you know what I mean? But, um, but, uh, you know, but the main thing be is that I, I do my own damn thing. I do my own work. I don't need no fucking buddy to tell me what to do, buddy. You know? Anyway, I'm like most people. I saw the fucking video. It was interesting. It was entertaining. I watched it and I talked about it. And then, and then, you know, you got these commenters online acting as if like they have some kind of inside scoop, some skinny on the ordeal. By the way, which they didn't give me credit for. Now, I made a very interesting point in my video. I said, you know, something about this video is um, a little suspect, a little gray area, because it didn't seem like a traditional stand-up comedy show. I said that. I said that in my video, right? I'm like, there's a gray area here. It doesn't seem like a typical stand-up comedy show. You got comedians on the stage. Sometimes comedy shows have theme nights, various different types of way in which they interact with the audience. Maybe there's a theme. Maybe there's skits. Maybe it's a back and forth um, kind of a comedy jam thing. Whatever, right? Didn't seem like a typical show. Well, upon further investigation, I was watching Gary Owen. Gary Owen's podcast. Gary Owen, he has a podcast. And he knows Dave a little bit, knows D-Ray a little bit, and he shed some light on um, the whole improv comedy night. You know, and again, this isn't confirmed. This is just, you know, a little bit more insight into the situation. Here's a little clip. It's been three weeks since the cat interview, and there's still remnants. And there's still like debris from it. Uh, I was watching a YouTube video where somebody must have bootlegged or they snuck uh, Dave Chappelle and D-Ray and Dion Cole were on stage together. And I'm guessing it was D-Ray's Monday night. D-Ray does Monday nights at improv. He's been that that Monday nights at the improv has been going on for probably 25 years. And D-Ray's probably been the regular host there the last 15 at least, I bet, years. And uh so here's the thing about D-Ray, and I love, I love D-Ray to death, but don't go to the improv on Monday if you're a decent named comedian and think you're just going to sit in the audience. D-Ray has, D has a way of sneaking you up on that stage, and then you're stuck, and then the crowd gives you a big smile, and then you got to tell some jokes. Did it to me a couple times on Monday nights. So it was interesting. Like Dave went up there, and D-Ray was hosting. And Dave came up and it was, it was, it was some cool little banner. And then Dave started going in on cat. He started talking about cats thing and everything. And then D Ray was disagreeing with Dave. It, well, I wasn't watching it to agree or disagree. I was actually enjoying the banner and interaction because it never got disrespectful. It never got like, how dare you say that? Dave gave his point of view and D-Ray gave his point of view. And as I'm, I, as I watch it, I'm sitting there going, okay, I see where Dave's coming from and I see where D-Ray's coming from. You see, I made the same observation from my experience as a stand-up comedian, all right? So fuck y'all motherfucking player hating freaks commenting on my video saying, oh, you talk too much, oh, blah, 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 what? I would like to see, you would never have deciphered that. You would never have came out with that in a million years, buddy. It, I'm the one who, well, one of the people, anyway, who saw that as, hey, there's something kind of fishy going on about this whole setup. Something kind of fishy going on. As Gary said, it's a, it was a Monday night show, potentially, possibly. Monday night show at the Improv. 
D Ray's the host. It's D Ray's show. It's D Ray's night. So D Ray's the man on that night, and he brings people up if he can, right? And he's on the stage. Other comedians are on the stage. It was kind of like a somewhat of a open, not an open forum, but there was a loose kind of feeling to it. And again, I don't fucking know. I don't know them niggas. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Like you, just like you dummies. I don't know what the hell happened. I wasn't there, but it seemed very loosey goosey and nobody gave me credit for that and all their play hate and trashing that they did on my video. You know what I mean? They just, uh, oh, blah, 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 da, 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 da. Hey, I've made a very good point, you know? And why that point is significant is because it then adds context, adds context to their onstage um, kerfuffle. Because it's like, you know, it's one thing if, if it's a kind of like a comedy jam where people are free to speak and everything's loose and D Ray's the host and it's kind of his show and, um, you know, he can run it how he likes and, you know, it's not a traditional stand up comedy set where it's like, you know, you pay whatever you pay for a Dave Chappelle ticket and he's on there doing Dave Chappelle for an hour and a half. It seemed as if he just jumped up there to do a guest set on a comedy theme night and him and D-Ray chopped it up a little bit. You know? I saw that. A lot of you dummies out there, you would have never have guessed that. You would never have deciphered that in a million years. You know what I mean? You would have just been like, oh, some comic rushed the stage and stood up and started beefing with Dave Chappelle. It's like, well, from my experience, I'm like, wait, the setup of the whole comedy night bit suspect to begin with. That's right. And, um, <clears throat> you know, gotta take a sip of water. You dummy's been getting my throat all agitated. Stomach's growling too. You get hungry, you get tired, you get thirsty, dealing with you fucking peasants online. And you want to know what I've been talking about? All right, well, let's get into it. Let's read a couple of your dumb comments. You know, you guys are so fucking smart. You know, every little damn fucking thing that ever happened. You know, oh, you know, there's, you know, blah, this and that. And da, 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 and... You know, you learn how to do your comments this way. Learn how to do your videos this way. Do it this way. Do it that way. Let's get into some of your comments. Because they're so, they're so necessary. As I said, never in my fucking history of podcasting have I ever had to deal with such nonsense, child, childish ass wiping. And by the way, this is a fake cigarette. It's a dummy cigarette. It's just um, rolled up oregano. It's theater. Just like my whole um, agitation and concern regarding you and your dumbo fucking comments. It's just theater. It's just performance. But what the hell would you dummies know about that anyways? You guys wouldn't know what the fuck a fucking performance was if it came up and swapped you in the fucking butt. All right? Half you dummy ignoramuses couldn't shine my fucking shoes when it comes to this performing shit. Yet you got all this fucking opinion about it. Well, you know, this dummy cigarette here is a fake performance, and this whole riled up blah, blah 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 thing I'm doing is a performance as well. It's craft, it's art, it's talent. What would you dummies know about that anyways? I'm not even mad, I don't even care. Look, look. One minute I'm screeching and yelling about it and performing and squawking about it. Very funny, very intense, very engaging. Like, believe me, an acting coach once told me I was intense. I was like in this acting class once and I was doing my thing and I was chopping it up because I'm a trained actor and they're like wow Jonathan's really intense I'm like yeah that's right I'm talented you know so like one minute I could be fucking the most you know King Kong ain't got shit on me next minute I was talking like this whatever right I'm a performer I smoke uh, fake cigarettes I have um, the ability to perform and emotion you know a bit being an actor and being a performer a stage performer theatrical or comedic 
It's really about building an emotional inner life. Can you produce a certain type of, um, you know, some, do you have a motor in you that can produce these emotional, um, you know, inner life to play a character of comedic talents, to play a character of dramatic talents? But what would you dummies know about that shit anyway, you fucking ignoramuses? Let me read these uh, comments, some of these here. You know, uh, Fake cigarettes. <clears throat> fake cigarettes to go with this fake ass news. You stupid comments. Let's get into it here. What do we got? <clears throat> Impersonation's not even close. Just stick to the story which is already incoherently being told. Jesus Christ. Some dummy wrote to me. Here's my response. Here's my response. I say, um, Sorry, typing shit everywhere here. Um, I say, uh, you're a liar and you hate that I'm doing something whilst your bum ass ain't doing nothing. My cat impersonation is at least close, you big cheat. My Dave one wasn't so hot, I just spit it off the dome. Stick to the story. What kind of inside scoop do you have? What do you know about this story? I'm probably the only comedian you've ever talked to and I think you're a loser not worth knowing, you bum. You're nasty, mean-spirited, and you should, and you tried to hurt my feelings. You asked for this, buddy. Like, comment, like, comment, share, and subscribe. That was my response to one idiot. Um, what else did I? What else happened here? Some more of these comments. Um, yet you decided to share your opinion. Someone criticized me for sharing my opinion. They wrote. Yet you decide to share your opinion. My reply was, um, what did I say? I said, um, yes, stupid. I decided to do that. And, yeah, I decided to share my opinion. And, dummy. Oh, here, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> Some asshole wrote, Pro tip, stop talking so damn much. First of all, it's a podcast. What else would you be doing on a podcast other than talking? Anyway, some dummy wrote, Pro tip, stop talking so damn much. And I wrote, Pro tip, go stick your head in a bucket, jerk wad. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Impressions are not your thing. Some dildo wrote. My reply was, Why are you so interested in my thing, you creep? Look, I'm a talented comedian. If you want to share and subscribe, that'd be cool. Or else, beat it. Told one commenter to beat it. So. You know, I guess in retrospect, or going through this right now, it really wasn't that big of a deal. You know, but, you know, you get a little annoyed after a while, you know, people talking shit about you and I guess, I don't know, I just decided to fire back a little bit. Gets on your nuts after a while, you know what I mean? Senator to say, he cat was talking about shit that niggas did to other niggas, but not about anything that niggas did to him. If I told my story, it would break your heart. Your heart. If I told my story, it would break your heart. I lost everything and never, ever told on anybody. And this nigga is the arbiter of truth. Cat, listen, I fuck with Cat hard. And wreck T. But, 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 but. Wait, 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 D-Ray, just tell me what part of the game fucks up another nigga's paper. And wreck What part TV. of the game is about telling on another nigga? Tiffany Haddish is lifting something heavy and as clumsy as she is. I don't disagree with Cat. He be telling the real shit. And hey, wreck this one's fucked TV. up this way and that one's fucked up this way. Yes, nigga, that is true. But why would you say that? Because all of us 
I'm trying to be in a better situation. Can we get over it? Right, so God Open the window. No, 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 Open me. the window. I, this room be, stinks. I want to be. I want to be as respectful as possible. So I'm telling you this. So when someone called you, they said D-Ray said it was good for the culture, but they didn't tell you why D-Ray said it was good for the culture. It wasn't because I felt. I also said it can't, what Cat said was he said a lot of personal stuff that has nothing to do with comedy. But the funny shit is funny. It's funny that nigga said. Oh no, it was funny. I'm not that's saying. No, 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 wait a minute. I'm not saying it wasn't funny. That's just funny. I. What did I say? I said a master chef could be friends. I stand by that. Me, I'm not going to say later about all the bulk of what you said, but I'm going to break down to ask me why you did shit and your ability to do shit. No. No, you know exactly. Stop. Stop with the semantics. It's only fair. Okay. You said. Tell your paragraph about either of the sentence. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. The things you did, the way that you move, you know not to never do that to somebody because of the way you were raised, because how you come from, because you have 40 years in. You said longer than anybody's been doing comedy. You said standards, so your way of moving is different. So Cat's way of moving, the way he came in, the way he came in is different. So I'm not making excuses for him, because I don't, I don't think everything was right. I'm just saying, Dave, though, you're a superhero. And when you're a superhero, yeah, you can't yeah. move the same way. Mm. Yeah. If you're a superhero, the way you are, you can't just flex your superpower for no reason because you do have stories about everybody. Probably some personal stories about people. No, 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 no. I hear what you're saying. What is the difference? Wait, wait, wait. Hear me out. No one sat him down. No one sat in front of Cap for real. No one sat me down, nigga. No one sat me down. Who the fuck would sit My thoughts in general regarding the Dave Chappelle, D. Ray Davis, little kerfuffle on stage. I had watched the video several times since in prepar in preparing for this video. And, you know, I've come to the conclusion that, you know, first of all, it was a gray area in terms of performance. It wasn't a typical stand-up comedy show. So the parameters were different. D-Ray interrupted Dave, but it had a loose kind of flow to it. There was some banter back and forth that never really got too heated or too disrespectful. Though, it is comedy 101. The last thing a comedian wants is to be interrupted on stage. So it was kind of strange to see the GOAT, Dave Chappelle, being interrupted that way. But, apparently, allegedly, again, I don't know the full facts, it was apparently, allegedly, D. Ray Davis hosting his Monday night show at the improv, it had a loose kind of feel to it. So he jumped in and they chopped it up. So it was all somewhat loose and, and in good fun. All pretty loose, all pretty much in good fun. Um, in terms of Dave's perspective, Dave being the goat, Dave being a major voice in comedy, I personally think he didn't say too much. He made some funny quips about Cedric the Entertainer, and then he basically said, look, Cat, you shouldn't behave that way. You shouldn't say the things you say. Get over it. We're all in this together as black comics. Why are you trying to cut out another man's paper? Whatever. Get over it. Which I don't really agree with. And Dave wasn't 100% accurate on some of Kat's statements and grievances and opinions. He skipped over a lot of things. He mixed up the whole, um, didn't mix it up, but he, well, I guess, yeah, he kind of did mix it up. He said that Kat didn't um, go after the white comedians, which he did. He went after the train by day, Joe Rogan podcast by night, all day. He went after um, Joe Rogan. Cat Williams, you know? Joe don't want me on there. He's putting on the same six niggas that ain't ever been funny. You know, he goes after Joe and, you know, I'm a Joe Rogan fan as well. So that's still on the table. Will Cat Williams podcast with Joe Rogan? Because, you know, as a Rogan fan myself, a lot of people would like to see that. So that's basically it, you know? 
Um, and um, the little, yeah, the, the D. Ray Davis and Dave Chappelle fight, cat fight, kerfuffle, all in good fun, all in good humor, kind of a weird offbeat night. And Dave's opinion was a little thin, lacking the uh, insight that he usually has. Though, that's just my opinion. Obviously, Dave is in a different position. He knows things that I don't know. He actually personally knows all of these people that Kat was talking about and beefing with. So obviously, his perspective is going to be a lot more valuable and a lot more meaningful than the 99.9% .9 of you dummies that commented on my video. And, you know, I guess probably 90% more um, valid than my opinion. Or 99% more valuable than my opinion. See, your guys' opinion is 99.99, 99.9% stupid. And mine is 99% stupid. So I'm somewhat smarter than your dumb ass. <clears throat> so... Hey, and God bless all y'all that did like and view and subscribe. Um, you know, it's all fun. You know, it's all in good humor. As I said, I'm a performer. I'm an artist. It's water off a duck's ass. Quack. <laughs> you know, whatever. And I want to leave off on this in regards to um, performing. You know, I joked and I chuckled and I kidded a little bit about the... Um, hostility and anger and grievances that I had regarding these uh, comments. And, um, you know, you know, I'm a Christian man and um, I believe in God and I believe in his son, Christ. And um, a lot of what Kat was going on about was how there's a lot of fake, phony liars and a lot of behind the scenes nonsense and a lot of treachery in comedy. And I saw a parallel in some of his words to something that I really enjoy from the man himself, Jesus Christ. So check this out. This is Luke 1940. Luke 1940. Well, it's really Luke 1928. And it's Jesus' triumphant entry. This is when Jesus is entering Jerusalem. After telling this story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into the village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and they found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus. <coughs> So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all the followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessing on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in, in highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke the followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst out into cheers. That's what our Savior said. The Pharisees were telling his supporters, the supporters of Christ were cheering and praising the Lord, right? And the Pharisees said, Hey, stop them! Shut them up! Shut them up from cheering! And Christ said, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst 
into cheers. The stones are along the road. The boulders along the road would crack open and burst into cheers. In other words, you can't silence the truth. You can't silence a true applause. The stones along the road would burst out into cheers. That is gangster. Christ said that. One of the many gangster things he said, you know, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what is God. You know, if I were truly the king of the Jews, they would come and claim me. Here, here's some wine, go get drunk, let's get drunk. Like, Christ said a lot of cool things, right? Let's get drunk and drink wine and shit. Like, he, you know what I mean? And this is just one of them. If the, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. And that's so, like, befitting of the whole Cat situation, Cat Williams situation. Not to compare that little, <laughs> that uh, legendary comedian to Christ himself, but, um, you know, that just goes to say the truth will always come out. So, I don't know, I thought that was just very fitting. God bless Cat Williams, Dave Chappelle, and D. Ray Davis. Continue doing your thing. And, um, you know, God bless.